How's it going guys? I'm your host Corban Gaming. Welcome back to another very special Dragon Faber video and for today's video, I'm going to be going through with you guys 10 strong items that you can obtain inside of the game without needing to go through the Inn at the Edge of Time. Now, the Inn at the Edge of Time, for those of you guys who do not know, is a place for challenge fights and I know that it is not for everyone considering Dragon Faber started out as a casual game but that being said, there are still plenty of other super strong items that you can get outside of the Inn at the Edge of Time that you can use for end game stuff and today I'm going to be going through with you guys 10 of them. The list is in no particular order and the information inside of this video is accurate at the time of this recording which is on 4th January 2022. So without further ado, let us jump right into the video. Starting off the list, we have the Ultra Omni Knight Blade, which is a light weapon that not only does really good damage, but also has fantastic endgame stats to boot. So if you're an NDA player, this is probably your, the best weapon that you can get. It's probably only second to the Exalted weapons from the Exaltia Tower in the Inn, but assuming you are unable to do that challenge for whatever reason, then this is going to be the best weapon that you can get from early game all the way up until late game. And why do I say early game? It's because this weapon is super simple to get, and I'll show you guys how you can get it later on even as a da player this weapon is also extremely good and unless you're fighting some really strong light resist monsters this is going to be the best weapon that you can have for your entire questing journey from level 1 all the way up to level 90 all right so in order to get the weapon it's actually very simple so go to your book of law click on book 3 go to oak law and then you want to travel right one screen go down one screen left one screen and over here, once you're on the bridge, you can mouse over this rope here on the right hand side and once it glows, you can click on it and then you can click climb down, walk up to Lawmaster Oruni and click quest. So I've done this quest as a super low level on my Let's Play series before. I can link the video on the top right hand corner of the screen right now for you guys to go ahead and check it out. So you really, you don't need any special quest requirements. You don't even need any good gear in order to complete this quest to get one of the best weapons inside of the game. So once you complete the quest, it has a 100% chance to drop this item called the Dimensional Shard. And once you get it, you want to go back to Falcon Reach. It doesn't matter which book. Then to go left one screen, walk up here to the BM Moglin, click on who's that, click on weapons, go to Ultra Omni Knight, and then you can merge your Dimensional Shard item into the Ultra Omni Knight Blade. So after you have done that and you want to upgrade your weapons, you can upgrade it for free and by... In order to do that, you go back one screen, click on items, click on special essences, scroll all the way down here and you can buy the Omni Essence here for zero gold. And then once you go back, go back to weapons, Ultra Omni Knight and you can merge it for the next level upgrade so you can use this from level 1 all the way up to level 90 and goes up increasing levels of 10 you really only need this one weapon for your entire questing journey apart from some light resist monsters that you face along the way the Soulforge Scythe is another really good endgame level weapon that not only gives you 10 all resist, 16 to all main set, but on top of that, you can also customize it to any element that you prefer. You can use any of the standard 8 elements or you, if you don't choose an element, then it will be automatically set to the void element which can be useful for certain cases. Most people that I know like to set it to ice element and this is because it will have good synergy with the next item that I'm going to mention on the list, but before that, let us go through how we can get the Soulforge Scythe. So the Soulforge Scythe is a little bit more tedious to get compared to the Ultra Omni Knight Blade. You will need to complete the entire Tomic Saga quest line before you can access the Soulforge Scythe. But as with your regular questing and uh, journeying inside of Dragon Faber, once you've done that and honestly it doesn't really have any difficult bosses, you will be able to access this. So the fastest way is to go to Timeline, click on Tomic Saga, go to Palo Village here. And then you want to go left, go left another time, and one more time, go down, go right. So before you complete the Tomic Saga questline, you will not be able to access this. Alright, so you want to walk right up into the Soul Forge, talk to Lanry. Okay, so first things you want to do is acquire the Elemental Spirit. So you can do either of this quest, it doesn't really matter which one you do. Both of them have the equal chance of dropping any of the 8 elements. You can only get 1 from each quest and it is completely random which element you get. Alternatively, if you don't want to align it to any element, then it will automatically, automatically be set to the Void element. Afterwards, you want to obtain a Spirit cast over here. Okay, so after you obtain the Spirit cast, then you can click on Soulforge items and... 
uh, yeah, you'll be able to forge the design of your weapon. So it is a really neat concept on top of being able to choose the element, you're also able to choose and customize the design of your blade. So that is very, very nice and it is a really good weapon that has a stable damage range. The next item on the list is the Ice Scythe. So this weapon is statistically weaker than the Soulforge Scythe if you're comparing stats, but we are not really using this weapon for the stats. Rather, we are using it for a slotted special and of course this feature is only available to DA players. But why you want to use this slotted special is because it has a 7% chance on hit to inflict minus 30 ice to your opponent for 3 turns inclusive. So this is what makes it so good. You can basically get free extra 30% damage bonus if you're using an ice weapon and most people like to pair this with soulforge scythe uh, by aligning soulforge scythe to ice element and then slotting the ice scythe special in order to get a really strong ice weapon attack so in order to get this weapon you can buy it for gold it costs 12,000 gold in order to get it you want to go to travel map on book 3 kingdom of green guard magus wood go to sherwood forest go right 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 again Go up, up, left, up, left again, up again, and talk to Igor over here. So click on shops, click on replica items, click on DA items, and there you can buy the ice side for 22,000 gold. So obviously this is only level 80, which means that it is not going to be better than the level 85 so for side over here. But of course, like I mentioned earlier, you're not using it for the stats or the damage, you're using it for its slotted special. Now the next item, and this is one of my personal favorites, is the Blade of All. So you can get this from the exact same place as the last item I mentioned inside of Igor's shop. So you can buy it for 22,000 gold. And again, the reason why you're getting this is for its slotted special. Not so much for how it is as a uh, weapon itself because it's only level 80 which means that it's not going to be as good as level 90 weapons. It doesn't have fantastic sets and it also doesn't do fantastic damage but its special effect is really good. Okay, so it has a 5% chance on hit to heal your maximum HP and MP by 4%. That is really good. It is not the best HP healing weapon inside the game and neither is it the best MP healing weapon inside the game. But it is the only weapon in the game to my knowledge that has both HP and MP healing inside of one special and that alone makes it uh, really good in my opinion. So this is why I usually use this over you know just uh, standard HP healing weapons or just a soul MP healing weapon. The Wings of the Thousand Flames is the best in slot back item for all resist in the entire game, giving you 15 all resist and on top of that, it also gives you minus 10 health resist which means that your healing won't suffer as much when using this back item. Now it is behind a rather tedious quest and on top of that it also has a rather low drop rate but that being said the quest is super simple to do and even a super low character can do it. In fact I have a video up on uh, the top right -hand corner of the screen right now showing me completing the quest and farming for the item as a super low level character. So in order to get it, you can go to any of the book travel maps. So I'll showcase the one for book 1 and book 2 first. Go to travel map over here, River Rhine Keep, click on take me there. And this basically starts the quest for the Wings of the Thousand Flames. So it has a low drop rate, so be patient when farming for it. For book 3, go to travel map, click on Deadlands, and here River Rhine Keep, same thing. So you just have to be patient. It's a simple quest, but it uh, can be pretty long. The boss is randomly generated and also if you're lazy to farm and you just have a lot of money, once you complete the quest, it will unlock a shop that allows you to buy a similar version of the wings called Wings of the Thousand Infernos. Exact same stats, exact same looks, just a different name for 500 DCs if you're lazy to farm for the item. But in my opinion, you should just go ahead and farm for the item. Even uh, with a very low drop chance, it only took my main character about over an hour to get it and my sub character, my orc character for my Let's Play Dragon Fable series about 45 minutes to get the wings. So honestly, it's really not too difficult to farm for. And once you get the wings, you can basically use it from early game all the way up to late game.
The hide behind is the best in slot defense as well as healing cape inside of the entire game. On top of giving you a whopping 20 BPD and 40 MRM, it also gives you extra 20% to your healing with its minus 40 to all resist and plus 20 to health resist. This is really good if you're hiding behind a shield and using a health pot or using your healing skills. In order to get this item inside of Book 3 Falcon Reach, you want to walk right up to Serenity's Inn. Okay, go on the right side, the odd job spot. Click on the hide behind and take the job. It's not a very long quest and it's rather simple to do. However, you will get uh, different level versions of the cape. For NDA players, you obviously want to farm for the highest level version, which is the level 85 version. And for non-DA players, you want to farm for the level 65 version. Slimy Necklace is the best in slot defense as well as healing necklace inside of the entire game giving you 4 BPD, 7 MPM as well as boosting your healing by a whopping 20%. On top of that, it also gives you extra 25 immobility resist which can be useful against monsters that have a high chance of stunning you. So in order to get this item, it is very simple. All you have to do is go to your travel map, book 1 or book 2 only. Go to Vedaros Crossing. Go to left. Go up into this house and click on the Kalin Extraordinary Quest. So once you complete the quest, you will have a chance of getting different level versions of the necklace. Obviously, whether you are a DA or a NDA, you want to farm for the level 75 version, which is the highest level version of the necklace. The Zeruk scale is a necklace that has really bad stats in general but what you really want to be using it for is its 10 all resist and it's the only other necklace in the entire game to give you 10 all resist apart from the defender's necklace and if you haven't farmed enough defender's medals to get the defender's necklace yet then this is your next best bet. For DA players you want to get the level 90 version and for NDA players you want to get the level 60 version which gives you 8 all resist which is the best in slot all resist necklace for NDAs. In order to get this necklace you want to go right up here to Serenity these odd jobs board here and click on Tizaruk. For NDA players who are having trouble with the fight, you guys can go ahead and check out my free to play uh, story bosses series on how to beat this fight. I will link the video in the card in the top right corner of the screen right now. So all in all, it's not a really difficult fight and you will get different level versions of the necklaces. So farm for the level 91 if you're a DA player and the level 61 for NDA players. Ogorex Treasure, while no longer being the best in slot belt for healing, still provides really good healing at an extra 5% healing by giving you 5 all resist and minus 10 health resist. On top of that, it also gives you decent defenses like 6 BPD as well as 6 MPM which can be helpful if you're healing behind a shield. In order to get this item, you want to go to Book 3 Travel Map, head on over to Kingdom of Green Guard, Oak Law, go to Sulan Eska. And then go up to Kara, go back down, talk to Mrita, pass quests, go up to Kara again and do the border prison quest. So it is not a 100% drop, you can get a few other different level belts from the quest but the one belt that you want to farm for is obviously the Ogorex treasure. Last but not least, we have the Stand the Scan Op pet. So this is a pet that does no damage, but it's very versatile in the sense that if you're above 50% HP, you can inflict the enemy with minus 15 all, which means that this boosts your outgoing damage by 15%. And on top of that, if the enemy has any immobility resist, you will be able to stun the enemy even easier after using Stand the Scan Op skill. And the second skill only activates when you're below 15% HP and that is the orb will inflict you with minus 15 to your health resist boosting your healing by 15%. Alright so in order to get this pet you want to go to book 3 travel map, head on over to Kingdom of Green Guard, Oak Law, Sulan Eska. So it's basically the same place as the previous item, head on over to Kara, go down, go to Mrita and then you want to do the star cross quest so star crossed over here so do this quest and it is a hundred percent chance to drop the stand the scan op pet so that's it guys my top 10 strong items in dragon favor that does not require you to do the in challenges let me know what you guys think down in the description below of my list do you agree or disagree with the items that are placed in the list do you think a certain item should be in there or do you think certain items should not be in there i would love to hear your comments and as always do give me suggestions for future video ideas and i'll be sure to look through all of them and do videos on them if i really like your idea Hope you guys have enjoyed the video and if you have learned something from it, be sure to give this video a thumbs up. And of course, subscribe to this channel if you guys would like to see more of such future content. Till the next time, I'm your host, Korriban Gaming. Peace out.